Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be starting in just a moment. Please take your seats. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to uh, session three of the extraordinary health issues section of our te night, or excuse me, 2014 Tesla Technology Conference. Um, today, I have the pleasure to introduce you, <clears throat> excuse me, to Charles Crosby. He's an MD for 40 years, and he's going to be talking to you about the CAMS technology. I can actually personally vouch for this technology as uh, as being viable. It's a it's on my top 10 list of technologies that need to disseminate into the world for health and healing. So, without further ado, here's Dr. Charles Crosby. Thank you. Coming back this way. Okay. I'd like to welcome you today uh, for a discussion of how we're made. We're going to deal a little bit more today with um, how things work as far as our bodies are concerned and how we can profit from some of the Tesla work that, that came before us that we might stand on the shoulders of this giant and see what it was that he was trying to convey to us. I'm going to briefly uh, talk about the nature of uh, Tesla waves, or scalar energy, whichever word seems to be most fitting. And then I'm going to give you some examples of how it um, helped people. And then finally, I'm going to try and draw a few conclusions as to how in these days, these trying times, this type of technology is being uh, put upon us, if you will. <clears throat> Scalar energy is uh, different from most of the other things that you've seen before, or that I've seen before. It's neither AC nor DC, and it's a non-Hertzian waveform. That's to say it does, it's not represented by a sine wave yet it's a different, and it has different characteristics as a result of that. Uh, Nikola Tesla, as we mentioned, is why we're here today, and it's using some of the things that, that he conveyed to us that we're going to go forward. The other people that you've heard speak on this topic, uh, Constantine Mile, he's spoken here several times before, very learned gentleman, uh, professor of electrical engineering and at a German university. This is his book and there's a rather s large section in the book that talks about the biological effects of this uh, therapeutic modality and we'll try and show you a few of those examples. Here we'll take just a moment to look at the nature of these problems and the answers here we see represented, if you will, a, a, a sine wave type of uh, electromagnetic output that we're all quite familiar with, we think. <laughs> okay, At least we think we know a little bit about it. But more than that, I, we're going to spend our time here looking at a longitudinal type energy transference referred to as scalar waves or Tesla waves. Notice that they are very different in the displacement and they're very different in their performance also. And in fact, our definition of, as to what in the world we're talking about is that we're talking about the energy of life. We're not talking about the energy of coils the energy of life. 
And you say, well, how in the world did you come on to this other energy form, or how do you make it? Perhaps that would be a better question. And this is one of the early devices that served as a transducer or a changer. It changed the DC into scalar energy. And you say, well, how does that work? Well, something like this. <clears throat> Most of the electronic things that we work with are controlled one way or the other. Most of them are controlled um, the crystal controls. And this is no different. This is a, a very specialized crystal that um, is chosen because it resonates at a certain frequency. And the frequency, it's been alluded to this morning several times, we'll call it 8 hertz. It's a little bit less than that, but round numbers, we'll call it 8 hertz. It's a natural occurring structure, and that's to say that throughout the whole piece of crystal that serves as the conversion uh, mechanism, it's holographic, so that every, every chip, every piece resonates at 8 hertz. It's chosen because it's like that. Not because it's pretty, but because it performs. Here we we'll take just a moment to talk about the Schumann resonance. No doubt heard of it before several times. It's been mentioned roughly at 7.86 Hertz. Call it 8. And Schumann Otto Schumann, again a German, German physicist in the 50s, me took measurements between the Earth's surface and the ionosphere in an average and came to this number as the Schumann resonance. It appears in recent years it's shifting somewhat. It's closer to 16 now, but if you think about the relationship of things, it's close to the first harmonic, which in essence is the same as the bass. But we're going to pretend for the discussion today that it's still at 8 hertz, the way Otto Schumann found it. Here we have a small, um, low-powered signal generator. Happens to have uh, FDA approval. And that is going to give us the power to make this 8 hertz happen. You might say, well, we've heard of 8 hertz, but is it a secret? No, it's not a secret. It's not a secret at all. In fact, uh, we happen to live in Orlando near the Space Coast and once I was sitting in a meeting, just like you are here, met a gentleman who was a technician that dressed the astronauts as they would climb into the capsule, and he would give them an 8 hertz generator to take in the capsule so that when they're up there in orbit or to the moon or wherever they happen to be going, they would have an 8 hertz generator with them so that their mind and body would presume they're down here and that optimal performance might occur. So it's not a deep dark secret. There are other sources also, but this one's very common to most of us. <clears throat> and we're going to spend a little bit of time in a basic way talking about health. And here we we see a six cell with the uh, negative charges inside the cell. This we'll call this edge here, the cell membrane, just for a diagrammatic reference. And notice the positive charges are outside in this six cell. And here we see a healed cell with the negative charges outside and the positive charges inside, these, the healed one would be resonating at 8 hertz and this would be the charge arrangement. The next uh, concept that we're going to 
discuss for just a moment is the idea of, if you will, the aura, many words, but we'll call it just the edge of the energy field so there won't be any discussion about, oh no, that's not what you call it. It's got a different, you know, we're not going to go there because it doesn't lead anywhere. But this, uh, this is an area that people actually recognize, not by name, but it, and they might call it their personal space. A certain people you let into your personal space and the rest, mm -mm, you don't come into my personal space. And it's roughly, this distance is roughly half a meter. And you'll see it in a little while why that would be significant. <clears throat> so there are three basic things that that we're working on. First, the uh, edge of the energy field that we just mentioned would be one. The duration of the treatment would be another one, but also finding where do you point it? Where do you direct this treatment? So those would be the three components to a treatment. And the other one, though it was mentioned this morning by other speakers, <coughs> or alluded to at least, in that this, this, these devices are very advanced in that they don't, they're not programmed with numbers. There's no key, keyboard involved, but rather your mind alone. Uh, your intention programs the machine and the machine does what you told it. Okay. I don't know how far advanced that is, but it's a long way beyond keyboards. And it works all the time. If you want optimum results, you need to program it with intention, and I'll explain that in a moment. <clears throat> Here, diagrammatically, we're looking at a brain very diagrammatic. <laughs> this being a left hemisphere, or left half, and this being the right hemisphere, the right half. And this uh, would be a nose, more or less. And this would be air coming out of the nose. Notice the mouth is not on the diagram. This is not a mouth thing. This is a nose <laughs> exhalation. So that when you find the area that needs help, many different ways to find it, you, in your mind you see a picture, oh, it's my left knee, okay, by example. You think of left knee, you exhale, with that thought in mind, the machine picks it up and works on left knee. So that's the basic idea, and the more exacting you can be in your direction, in your intention, the better results are going to be. You don't need long medical words. This boo-boo on my knee, fix it. That's sufficient, okay? No, you don't need long medical words. <clears throat> so you, it's exhalation with intent to heal. You know, that really sounds like sort of a strange idea. Maybe we should have done some research on that. Well, we actually did do some research. University of Central Florida in Orlando, 10 years ago, we had MDs, DOs, and chiropractors. I personally excluded myself so as not to slant the results. And we found that it did work from about half a meter away. So we were on the edge of the energy field, programmed with intention. These people had back pain. It was a standard research setup with 100 patients, 50 in the placebo group, and you know all those words that go along with research. But it was placebo controlled and, and so forth, and fit the IRBs for the university, and so it was official research.
quantum mechanics, um, Einstein would say, has something to do with the movement of atoms. And in truth of fact, we're not going to go into that today, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but that's playing in the ballpark as we play this game. He had some other things to say that I'll allude to, and it, it appears that we've moved beyond his level of expertise as we pursue this. <clears throat> Here's his well-known his well-known formula. And there's one thing I'd like to make very evident here. And that's first, well, we all know what these letters stand for. Let's start with that. E would just be energy. M would be mass. And C would be the speed of light in this instance squared. But one of the very interesting things that sets scalar energy aside from AC and DC, which, or, or RF for it anyway, all of those, notice in this expression here, there is no D. There is no D, meaning there is no distance factor in this energy form. We could be here, and work on this gentleman or that one there or they could be in the other end of the hotel and we could work on them or they could be across the country they could be around the world anywhere the D is not in this formula the distance does not matter distance limitation no limitation. So that if we were to look at it a little bit more, whoop, oh, this thing goes wild, doesn't it? Yeah. No, try the other way. This, uh, this actually happened some time ago that uh, a gentleman had two bright children. They both became MDs. One of them practiced in Santa Barbara, out here, and the other one in Baltimore. She was an ophthalmologist and he was an alternative medicine person. Well, dad got sick and he went to the hospital in Fort Lauderdale and sister came down, worried about dad, and mother was at the bedside also. But dad had been in coma for six weeks. And it didn't look like he was going to make it. So I got a phone call from brother, who's out here in Santa Barbara. It says, Chuck, uh, I've got this laser machine of yours. Uh, how do I use it? So I told him what I just told you. Right here in the room, pretend that you're right next to your dad in the room. Think of his brain as being the probable place where the problem was. And what does he do next? He snorts <laughs> with that thought in mind, fix dad's brain. But it was Friday afternoon, and you know how busy things get Friday afternoon. So he went home. Well, I forgot to shut the machine off. The machine's running. He's at home. He comes back to work on Monday morning, and Sis is on the phone. She says, Robert, I don't know what you did, but Dad is up and walking around. He's had return of short-term memory. He's eating. What did you do? Well, this all came to me later on. It seems that brother here, he, uh, he's well-known, and he writes a newsletter entitled 
second opinion. And he told of this story of his sister, and himself, and dad, and so forth. And he couldn't explain it, but his dad was well, and he published this in his newsletter, the story. And three years later, a two-liner still in his newsletter that said, Dad is still well, 93 now. He was 90 back when this happened. And that's just an, a documentable example. If you can fix them 3,000 miles away, if they're up in orbit, that's only 100 miles. You know, and the moon's only, you know, at least within the limits of our planet and the sizes that we're familiar with, it's not a problem. And we have similar experience in other parts of the world. So the distance doesn't matter. The distance is not involved in this therapeutic program. I talked about Albert Einstein there for a moment and said, well, he didn't believe this. He used to call it spooky work at a distance. That's a direct quote. Spooky work at a distance, and you, you wonder, well, how could that be? Well, if we can go along with the Big Bang Theory that at one point in time we are all a speck of something somewhere that exploded, sort of simplistic, that we're still attached, and that as a result of that attachment, we're still able to, if you will, in this instance, help people at any distance. Well, Dr. Einstein passed on in 57, and four independent labs took up the question that I just voiced, and they all four of them proved it's correct. He was correct from a theoretical standpoint, but more than that, it, it works. The uh, machine's been upgraded a little bit, as the expression goes. And then you, you wonder, well, how does it work? Well, there are several thoughts. Um, let me step back a moment. A Herkimer response is a healing, the results of a healing crisis, such that you get products of the healing that make the person sicker for a while before they get well, okay? And with the, this method, there is no Herkimer response. We think two things. First, that it optimizes the substrate such that the pathologic cause is no longer effective. And that secondly, that it's transferred, perhaps, the disease to a different dimension. Call it 11, call it 13, depends on which book you read, most say 11. And that that may be the reason that it works. It's really not too important why it works, but those are a couple of thoughts. And here's the word here, the Herkimer response that I just alluded to. That's a hypothesis. The other one is that these diseases are first a field disturbance before they become a body problem. And we wondered about this. We started, as you might imagine, putting the transducer here on the body and uh, worked pretty well. But we thought, you know, if it's a field disturbance, why don't we go to the field? So we moved it from the body out here to the edge of the field, roughly half a meter, give or take, but roughly half a meter. And we got, a, we got about a five-fold improvement in performance, which made us suspicious that we might be right. 
we might be correct. And we've been many years now, they wrote a 15 years, and it's no doubt in my mind, but that does give you optimal performance when you move the transducer out to half a meter. And then you raise the question, oh, how does the rest of it work? How does it work? I mean, a thought's one thing. Well, there's a theory. We have a theory on this also. And that is that what we have here, we were gifted with, if you will, a parametric resonator. Well, it's a biological parametric resonator. In a couple of words, three words or four words, we're saying that the thought bounces around in here in our brain and gains power, gains strength. And then we put it into a resonant, into an amplifier, a machine, and off it goes. Again, that's a theory, but it does seem to fit in with what we've seen. Well enough, enough of theory. Let's take a look at some results just for fun. Okay. Uh, this lady uh, lives in Virginia. And uh, she has a little bit of problem with her hand. She's sort of ashamed to go to church because the way her hand is deformed. Now I know they're much worse, but this is just an example. You can see this sort of gooseneck here in her index finger. She's 84, you can see that too. And she was treated with a, a laser-powered device. Same, th same theory, same method, except this has more power. It's laser-powered. FDA approved laser powered, but the output is scalar. It's not laser. Okay. 